Hey folks, welcome to Chill Mini Painting, where we are back painting the third and final Rock and Roll Troll. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know it's been a learning curve with these speed paints on some of the other models. But in this video, we leveled up. Bam! Look at this guy. This mini is fire. The hair. The skin. The drums. The practice is starting to pay off. I could not achieve this level of shadows and highlights with conventional paint. So we aren't gonna mess around today. Let's rewind and jump straight into the painting. And I'll talk a bit about how I leveled up my slap chop. Then we can do a side by side comparison of all three of the trolls at the end of the video. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Let's chill and paint. So let's start about talking about the skin on the model. I was really looking for a light green. It's something I attempted to do with the other model I painted, but I really didn't get the results I was looking for. In the last mix, I did one drop of orc skin with three drops of the zealot yellow. With this mix, I did one drop of orc skin with six drops of the zealot yellow. And that helped out in two ways. The first way it helped was I actually got the tone of green that I was looking for, a really light green. And the second way it helped is it thinned out the paint so there isn't as much pigment compared to the medium of the speed paint. If you're going to do slap chop painting, meaning you're going to do a white dry brush over a black coat and then put on the speed paints, it's important to thin down the speed paints. The way that the army painter wants you to use the speed paint is to start with a base coat of white. And if the model was white, you would want all of these really dark pigments to get into the recesses of the model. But because we already took the time to dry brush the model ahead of time, we don't need the speed paint to do that work of darkening up the shadows. We've done it already. So if you thin down the paints, you get a more dynamic highlight without having to worry about keeping the shadows dark.
Next up, we have a little bit more of the pallid bone, and I'm not gonna talk about it a ton because I've talked about it in my other videos, but I will say it's still one of my favorite colors. Because I took the time to do the dry brush ahead of time, the shadows and the highlights on the model look great, and the palette bone almost goes on like a wash. All it does is tint the model, and you still get the detail underneath. Okay, let's talk about the wood in the drums, which I got from combining a drop of the Satchel Brown with a drop of the Slaughter Red. I've already used this combo before and I think it's something I'm gonna go back to a lot. The result is a nice dark cherry wood. I've noticed when you're doing the fine detail with the speed paints, it is possible to do, but you have to be careful with a couple things. You have to make sure that your brush is dry ahead of time, because any water in the brush is gonna dilute the paint and it's just gonna run everywhere. The second thing is to not load your brush up with too much paint. If you've got a big glob of speed paint on the tip of your brush, as soon as it touches the model, it's gonna run into every recess that it can find. Here we're gonna take a look at the hair. And again, I thinned down the Beowulf blue with just a drop of the pallid bone. And it didn't change the color at all, it just thinned down the paint so that more of the dry brush can poke through, making it a lot more dynamic to look at. I decided I was going to use the peachy flesh for all of the rope on all three of the models just to give it a little bit of consistency in the color scheme. For the loincloth, I used Slaughter Red, and I didn't dilute it down like I did with the blue and the green. And the result is that it's probably my least favorite part of the model. For the ribbons on the drumsticks, I actually did dilute the Slaughter Red a little bit with the Zealot Yellow. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but the diluted red on the ribbons looks way better than the red on the loincloth.
Here I'm using a little bit more of the Broad Sword Silver Metallic Speed Paint on the drums. This is just straight out of the bottle, no diluting at all. For the troll's little coin purse on the side, I used Purple Swarm. Again, I didn't dilute down the purple at all. It would look better if I added a drop of the Zealot Yellow or the Palette Bone. So now that you've made it to the end of the video, you can see a comparison between the three trolls that I've painted with the speed paint. I think seeing the three models side by side makes it clear just how more dynamic the drummer is compared to the other two. Let me just turn these trolls around so you can see all their adorable little loincloths. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be taking a break over the winter holidays, so I'll see you again in the new year.